lines. To protest or not to protest, Singaporeans are not exactly taking to Hong Lim Park like fish to water. Have fun, but please do not touch others. Orientation games in universities come under the spotlight. People, people everywhere, but is Singapore bursting at the seams just yet? Good evening and welcome to the news. The show was credibility can't be measured with a teaspoon. Hello everybody, I'm Adriana. Wow. And I'm BBC. Topping the show today, since September, the authorities have allowed Singaporeans to protest or hold public demonstrations without the need for permits at Hong Lin Park. The decision is seen by some observers as a sign that the country is gradually loosening its grip on the freedom of expression. And then there are others who feel that the park would be better off as a freak show arena. We sent Andre Chichak to find out how Singaporeans have been using the new protest space. After years of civil obedience, Singaporeans are slowly coming to grips with the idea of speaking their minds, and in public too. Ever since the government relaxed rules on public protests and outdoor demonstrations, a trickle of Singaporeans have been showing up at Hong Lim Park to speak out about issues that range from maid abuse to the sudden drop in ERP prices at some gantries downtown. This is not fair, you know. I took unpaid leave just to come down here to protest about the high ERP prices. But what happened? They blackang pushing on the issue suddenly. They lowered the charges. Now, uh, I don't have anything to protest. How can it be? I want my freedom of speech. Thank you very much. I want my... No, no, hey, no. I want to protest. Give me my freedom of speech. No, no, no freedom. Give, no, no. Give, give, give me, me my freedom of give, speech. Give it back, give it back. No, 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 want... no, 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 no. Yesterday, two people arrived at the park to protest against their own parents who were involved in a matchmaking session at the other end of the park. No to photos exchanging. No to photos exchanging. We choose to be single. We want to be single. That's right. We don't need to get married to get an HDB flat. We can buy our own HDB flat. That's right. So can I. Do we look like we need help? We don't need help. We choose to be single. We don't want to get married. By the way, this is leave us alone, not leave you as alone. That's right. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. We are not single, desperate and ugly. We are not desperate, single and ugly. I don't need help. She doesn't need help. Yeah. The park's location downtown may seem like an ideal one, but given the baking temperatures we've been experiencing lately, protesters here have had very small audiences. It should be at night. The weather here is very hot. Too hot. Uh? Too hot. What if it was at night? At night. Uh? Still very hot uh, at night. Really? Do you like the grass and the lights make it uh, very nice? This is a good place to play football. Hello there. Hello. Hi. If there was a protest going on here, sir, would you stay to watch? Uh, depends. My boss is not watching me. <laughs> won't you be afraid, scared for your life? No, no. Why, why won't you get scared for the life? From whom? Interesting, I guess. You never have that here in Singapore? I've never seen one. Yeah. Have you? No. And I think it's an important part of the political culture of a country and I think it's important that Singapore has also that possibility. Do you think this is a conducive place to have protests? Even a speaker corner, there's nobody there. They corrupt, promote bad values and scar people for life. No, we're not talking about the latest issue of Eight Days, but about orientation games. Many parents have written into the press about orientation games that are distasteful and have gone too far in terms of human contact. Jacques investigates. Orientation games at universities are traditionally held to break the ice and to forge a sense of camaraderie among new students. But increasingly, the activities look like a veiled attempt to get students hitched and eventually contribute to Singapore's marriage and divorce statistics. Well, that is indeed the view of some concerned parents who feel that university orientation games should not be an extension of the SGU. They are concerned that forcing students to participate in games that require indecent physical contact with the opposite sex 
will perpetuate sexual promiscuity in some students. My girl is very, very bright, okay? I sent her to this top school, top girls school in Singapore, okay? I shall say, RGS, top girls school. She was very good girl. She never went out except to go to church. She did her 10-year series. She never had any boyfriends or whatever. She didn't know any boys. Only a few girlfriends came to the house, that's all, okay? And then she had three distinctions, three distinctions for A-levels, okay? So I said, Girl, you can go to any local university you like, okay? So she chose NUS and I'm, I'm very angry, you know, I, I really regret this decision because when she went there, there was this thing that they called the Orientation Week. Oh my goodness, they forced her to play this game called the Mouth to Mouth. Mouth to Mouth with boys. How disgusting is that? If I knew that this was going to happen, I would have sent her to a government school, a co-ed school, correct or not, or a neighborhood school, right? You know, I'm going to write another letter to the forum. You just watch me. You just watch me. And mouth to mouth, students use, well, nothing but their mouths to pass a suite to each other. You may have seen it in your neighborhood playgrounds played by secondary school students in uniform. Besides oral hygiene issues, concerned parents say it's the first step towards making students comfortable with the idea of locking lips with the opposite sex and eventually leading to sexually transmitted life. So I thought this butch looking girl was quite cute. That's why I chose her. But can you imagine the horror that I felt when I realized she was a he called Steven. Oh my god. And then there was this other game where all the guys had to go into the bathroom and shower together. And the bathroom stalls, right, had no doors. Oh my god. It was so humiliating, you know, to strip in front of all those guys and everybody checking you out. No, wait. That was national service. Parents the news spoke to suggested alternative games that student leaders at universities should consider as part of orientation activities. These include going back to the good old days of musical chairs with sharp objects stuck on the seats, Hampton Bola with shot put balls, beating the crap out of each other with textbooks, and if you're feeling particularly adventurous, drinking Chinese milk out of each other's shoes. This is Jack as we reporting for the news. We're going for a short break. But do join us in two minutes as we find out more about Singapore's ex expats. That's me. No, not you. Welcome back to the news. On the one hand, they are said to cause Singapore's brain drain. On the other, they are lauded as the country's third wing of the economy. After years of government calls and campaigns, overseas Singaporeans are beginning to answer the call for their return. Some credit their return to the growing effectiveness of the decades-long campaigns targeting overseas Singaporeans while others feel that adding Chui Kui to the menu of events hosted by the Overseas Singaporean Unit in New York and London did the trick. Whether it's the looming recession in the West or the increasingly bright economic and social outlook in Singapore, Singaporean expats are returning in large numbers and staying. But their return home hasn't been entirely smooth, as I found out. One example is Arthur Lim who spent the last 15 years living and working in France. He returned to Singapore two months ago because he missed the food in Singapore too much. I didn't think there would be a problem because I've always felt very Singaporean when I was abroad, uh, like always asking my parents to send me the instant um, nasi lemak or the um, instant chicken rice. But uh, surprisingly, I feel uh, quite out of place now that I am uh, back. Uh, uh, for example, yesterday, I uh, asked my colleagues, I said, uh, maybe we should do a company weekend uh, at uh, Sentosa, or we can maybe watch the Merlion, or uh, maybe we can go to Hopper Villa. Uh, they stared at me as if I had said something wrong. Usually I have to go out to lunch alone because uh, they don't seem to like the uh, hot and stuffy um, hawker centers or those roadside stalls that I have been raving to try for decades. And they say I speak funny. 
The Singaporean ex expats are scrambling to find a niche for themselves as the economy takes a downturn. But acceptance of ex expats may be somewhat less than smooth, perhaps due to the numbers of overseas Singaporeans returning. You know, I'm very angry with these people. I'm supposed to be the foreign talent here. And then these people come into the company. They get higher paid than me. They get promoted faster than me. Then what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to let it be. Let it be, let it be. You think what? I'm the beetle. Some ex-expats are managing to deal with the stress from their attempts to assimilate back into Singaporean society by banding together as an enclave, choosing the new upscale area of District 11 as the unofficial ex-expat town with organic food stores, exotic eateries, thrift shops and bookstores with nightly readings, adding to the district's bohemian charm. Mate, I don't mind if I and other returning Singaporeans don't quite fit in. After all, we have years of overseas experience. But as long as companies operating here learn how to treat us better and value us more, that's it, eh? You see, as ex-expats, we should band together so that we can negotiate better terms for ourselves. After all, we didn't come back to earn a local pay. We deserve an ex-expat pay in order to support our ex-expat lifestyles and our ex-expat status. Don't you reckon, mate? Nay, hey, simple. While the number of returning overseas Singaporeans is not expected to slow down anytime soon, it remains to be seen if they can assimilate back properly into the local population. This is Andre Chichak reporting from Singapore, Singapore for the news. Local entertainers have often made a bigger name for themselves from their extracurricular activities rather than their acting ability. Yet for one celebrity, overexposure on television has become a serious danger. Jacques Wee finds out what went wrong with local celebrity Kwa Liao Sien. Since his debut 15 years ago on the set of the Ra Ra Show, Kwa Liao Sien has climbed his way to the pantheon of Mediacorp stars and is acknowledged as Singapore's funniest funny man and most hardworking actor. And yet there is a feeling that Kwa Liao Sien has finally overextended himself and audiences have begun to desert him. Of course, I'm an avid fan of uh, Mediacorp Channel 5 programming. Yeah, that's why I am an early adopter of this uh, Mayo, Meow, how you pronounce Meow, 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 whatever. Uh, and I bought this full HD LCD set to watch this HD5. Yeah, but I tell you something, uh, this quality of CN uh, is all over the place, uh, I tell you. He's repeat comedy show in the afternoon. And then in the evening, his new comedy show. Oh, and then if I change channel, uh, he's on Media Cop 8, uh, this new serial drama, you know. And he's on the variety show also, you know. And he's on the food show also, you know. When I change channel, you are. Uh, he's also on the travel show, you know. I cannot take this anymore, you know. I cannot take this anymore. I need medication. It's not good for my health. Why is he all over the place? Why? As it now stands, there is a small but significant trend. Lower audience ratings, lower numbers for his official fan club, and a surprising number of hate mail to the producers at Mediacorp whenever Kwa appears on their shows. Yet there are those who continue to believe in the brand of Kwa Liao Xian. Well, you can never get enough of a good thing, huh? I don't think audiences will get tired of Kwa Liao Xian, huh? Because uh, his shows are still among the top-rated uh, shows on any given TV channel in Mediacorp. Uh, so I am very proud to announce now huh, that Kwa Liao Xian will have eight new shows in which he will have uh, major leading roles in. 
huh? uh, as well as cameos and special long-term guest appearances on five other separate shows. Yeah, so very good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So uh, everybody give a standing ovation to Kua Liao Xian. <laughs> The news has approached Mr. Kua Liao Xian to comment on his overexposure on television. Unfortunately, he is unable to join us on tonight's show. His publicist says that he is filming four comedy serials, three television dramas, two talk shows, and one game show back-to-back -back this week. This is Jack Alzui reporting for the news. Time again for a very short commercial break. Yes, we do rely on them quite a bit, for we have such a headache trying to find a sponsor. Even Panadol can't help. But do stay with us for the latest in the weather after the break. Welcome back to the news. The government recently announced that Singapore's population grew by a record 5.5% last year to reach 4.84 million. Now, this is the fastest growth of our population since figures were first collected in 1871. Given the country's small size and the amount of land taken up by golf courses, many Singaporeans are concerned that a growing population may affect the quality of life here. Here's Jacques Wee with this report. In the year 1901, Singapore's population stood at 200,000. 100 years later, that figure had grown to 4 million. And since the year 2001, Singapore's population, made up of Singaporeans, permanent residents and foreigners living here, has grown to 4.84 million. If that doesn't surprise or disturb you, how about this? Australia, which is 11,000 times bigger than our tiny little red dot, has a population of just over 20 million people. No wonder then that some Singaporeans are not at all happy about the squeeze for space in a country that was once called a little piece of nose booger by a foreign politician. Every day when I take the bus or MRT, I really fear that somebody might accuse me of molesta. It's so crowded, I can't even move my hands. I don't even know why I bother to iron my clothes. The steam that comes out from everybody's armpit, including yours, is enough to do the job. Really? With fewer Singaporeans getting married and having babies, and even fewer still willing to do dirty jobs, the government has had no alternative but to attract more foreigners to our shores to beef up the local labor pool. But at what cost? I'm very fed up, you know. Because I work as electrician, last time I can earn up to $1,500. Now I can only earn $600. Hey, you know why? Because all my customers go and use the foreign worker who are living in the housing estate to do all the repair work for them at discounted price or more. What like that? Huh? How can like that? I'm so angry, you no. Know. This is not right. I tell you this is not right. This is this is a Singaporean livelihood, you no. Know. I'm a Singaporean. My livelihood is at stake. This is not right, I tell you. It's not right. Last time I used to wake up at 6 a.m., you know, to go for those uh, book sales at the library. Sorry, can you stand closer to the camera, please? I don't want to be so profile. I, I told you this the last time, yeah. Yeah, as I was saying, I wake up at 6 a.m. To, to go for those uh, book sales, you know, because the queue is so long and because, you know, I have to jostle with, like, those heartlanders, you know, those people living in, like, Tuapayo or Angmo Kyo, I don't know, you know. And then now with all these uh, foreign people coming in, like those uh, pay to mamas or what have you, you know, so it's getting very, very crowded in, at, at these book sales, you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, and, and now with the po population multiplying like gremlins, you know, it's, it's, it's even harder. And it's, it's especially difficult for me because I stay so far away from the library. You know where I stay? I stay in Nasim, you know, so I have to wake up at 5.30 a.m. now. With the government expecting the country's population to grow up to 6.5 million in the next 20 years, all I can say is good night and good luck. This is Jack as we reporting for the news. The weather is up next and Barbarella something something is standing by at the news weather center. Hello everyone.
everybody. My name is Barbarella Chantel McCarley. That's right. And I'm going to tell you all my sisters about the weather for tomorrow so you know where the wet spots are and how to avoid the dry spots. Yeah? Also, to all you army boys out there who find that I look very familiar, well, that's because I look exactly like my twin sister. Her name is Tammy and she studied in NYP. How to tell us apart is very easy. She like to eat yellow rice, but me, I like to eat white potatoes. Yeah? Okay, and now for the weather tomorrow. A lot of sailors will be sailing in from America at 3 o'clock. So my mess service tells me that a lot of white clouds will be blowing, blowing and blowing to the Duxton area. So to you, all my sisters out there, be there or be square, yeah? Okay, that's all I have for the weather tomorrow. And remember, my name is Barbarella Chantel McCarley and I only wear Chanel. Thanks for that, Bobs. All right, that's all the time we have for this edition of The News. As always, please do remember to check out our website for more updates and reports. I'm Adriana. Wow. And I'm BBC, signing off. Bye-bye. So, Adriana, I have your website up here. I know. Don't I look pretty and sexy? No, you don't. What do you mean? You look kind of cheap, really. Is that a receding hairline you have there? <clears throat> oh, look at the time, I gotta go. But don't you believe that we should band together? You and I, as ex expats, banding together. Uh, sure, we do the food club. Is it? Uh, we go and yeah, we we eat. We can do that, but we, we should band together as ex expats so that we can negotiate with our employers, our new employers, better terms for ourselves. Do you know what I'm talking about? Does, does that involve any sort of like a social club or something like that? Because, you know, I, I, I am feeling very out of place um, here in Singapore after I come back from Paris. Because, yeah, uh, yeah, something like that. So like yeah. a social club, um, maybe we can go and eat the shark weight here. Yeah, uh, mate, mate, or listen the, to me. Uh, maybe listen we can me, eat the, um, the prawn meat. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe we can that, eat, uh, you know, the roja. Hey, this uh, guy is clueless. Maybe you're... Oh, wait, there are lots of mate, the food that listen I... listen to me. Listen, it's more than that. This, this thing, that banding together thing, can help you become successful as an ex expat It's not just about food, mate. Not just about food. But that is what I miss the most about Singapore. I want oh, to eat the food. Care. I want to eat the rojac. I want to eat the... I want to eat the laksa. I want to eat all the foods. All right, banding together will help you get your laksa and your mm. chicken rice and so, all that. Oh, I okay? like the barbecue chicken wing. All right, you're oh, in. The barbecue you're in chicken the club. wing. I will eat it, eat it, and okay. it up. He's in the club. Oh, I mean the He's club. He's in the club. A MediaCorp Studios production for Channel 5.